Hello. Okay, well that took a long time. Fuck. But, uh, I've upgraded to pro now, so... No more fucking delays. Get me lost right in the middle of everything. Okay, so... Okay, so the point of this is the fucking maths, you know? Like, how's this gonna go down? How's How the fuck is this gonna happen? It's like, well, it's the same problem as before. Okay, the only problem that we had before was, okay, given some X, you know? Give us the fucking X, Y, Z, right? You know, with all these points. That's all we want to know. Like, we've got, I've got this bunch of points. I want to be able to control the position of each point, the um, rotation and the scale of each point. Um, and then, you know, you know, and while I'm doing that, like, I also want to be able to calculate, like, live at any any time I want to calculate for any length along this line that's now like spiraling through 3D space um, give me an XYZ for that length just some X along the line give me an XYZ that's the problem that we've solved now okay and now I'm thinking fuck let's just go further you know okay what happens if it's a fucking plane now remember it starts as a plane and then if you have points in here and you can control the XYZ this thing can warp into anything you've got a sheet now that you can just warp and do whatever the fuck you want with Okay, and this problem here is giving some x y, and remember this x y is inside of this plane, inside of the blanket. You know, the bottom left hand corner of the blanket is naught naught, and the top right is, you know, whatever, the length and width of it. And you can any point along it, you just want to have an x y z, right? Same as here, just a vector, given both x and y, right? So that's the problem that we got to solve. Um, How we do that, I'm not actually sure. And of course, you know, we want to fucking generalize, so... We want to fucking generalize, so, um, you know, you could do this in 3D as well. You know, and this thing totally messes with my brain. I don't actually know what this is. I mean, a blanket I can understand, but what is this? <laughs> You know, what happens if you have a solid mass and you're rotating and moving points inside of it? What does that mean? I don't, I don't actually know. I gotta be honest. Like I, I don't know what that means. You know, with a blanket, you can move a point in the middle, and if everything else is fixed and you move a point in the middle, you've actually kind of increased the amount of blanket that exists because you're stretching it, right? Or maybe the blanket itself gets thinner. I don't know. It's kind of mind bending. You know, like, you know, once if you grab a point here, I mean, I can understand if you grab this end point and start rotating and it's, you know, it's like you've got this cube of jelly and you kind of twisting the edge of it and everything else is going to twist around with that edge cube. You know, I, okay. But now you can, in, in the inside you can twist it, which I can also understand. And you can expand the inside, which doesn't make sense because it's all fucking solid. But maybe the density changes? Ugh. Anyway. Um, lots of crazy shit to think about, um, and I feel like this is this is something that can go nuts. Like if we keep going in this direction, like this, you know, I think we. This is what excites me is I think that this is shit that no one else has really kind of gone done. I mean, I I, I don't know about you, but this stuff all feels pretty fresh to me. Um, you know, but what's the fucking point in saying that? Okay, so like I said, okay, in two D, you've got this plane. You know, and you've got, and all you, all we're, all we're gonna do, just like before, is you just split this up into dots, right? You know, and it doesn't matter where these fucking dots are. The point is, they're somewhere on the plane, and all it means is that for this guy, this relative coordinate sitting here, this relative coordinate, whatever, like, you know, if you move the fucking dot, this part is gonna go through there. You know, like, you know, um. Oh, it's confusing. Okay, so I hope, I hope the next fucking thing is anchoring because I think anchoring clarifies everything from here. Um, what the fuck is that? Okay. Um, okay, so this this is what we got so far. You know, we've got this block uh, and we just got a single line going through it and you bend the line and the block bends with it. Um, fuck, I hope this all makes sense eventually because I'm a little bit lost now. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. You don't add track points, you add meshes. Okay. So, I want to change it up. Fuck the track points, right? Let's do it with the fucking meshes, right? So instead of having it all based on these fucking track points, fuck the track points, why don't we just add a piece of mesh, right? That's all we're doing. We, we pull in a piece of mesh and we stick it on. And then we pull in another one and we stick it on, right? That's all we, that's all our process does. But we've got this kind of like retarded thing where we like start with the track points and then try and get them and like add the meshes up to go along the track points. You know, and if, and if it doesn't, you know, if, if the mesh pieces are, are too long or some shit, you know, then, then it's like, you know, then, then, then you have a bit of like track point path sticking out the end or it's too shallow, you know, and then these mesh points are like in between all of this crap. You know, and it's great that we've generalized that we can put track points anywhere in between here. But why? Why not just make a fucking easy, straightforward, most expected standard where we just put track points at the beginning and end of the mesh pieces that you slot together, right? Why not? I mean, it's simple, right? And it makes it, I mean, it's just so simple looking at it like this, the way it looks right now. You know, and we can just slot, you can just take this piece out and stick in another one. It can be a different length. And it's just automatically works like before you know I had this weird mapping bullshit it's like no 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 the whole the, the base structure is just a list of these fucking bad boys right any of these can be any shape right any of them can use any um any mesh and uv and all that shit the only thing is that they both define kind of a top and a bottom you know they both slot into each other i mean the interesting thing is one of this interface here isn't flat like who this could like bend around like it could be a puzzle piece that slots into it but that's that's something I haven't actually really looked into but I hope you agree this is much simpler okay and if you don't agree well I'm gonna have to fucking school you Okay, put mesh points in interfaces. Okay, now if we're gonna do this thing in more dimensions, right? So now I'm just, you know, generalizing as far as possible. Wow, I can record for eight hours. Oh my God, okay. Um, okay, so thank God for pro mode. Oh, is this working? Yeah, okay, so. So yeah, I mean, before we just had this line and we had a point, 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 but now we could go in, th in 2D, like this is a, this is how we would like do the blanket motherfucker, right? Like, and, and there's an interface between these two points and you can put a point here. So it's all on the outside. It's all in these interfaces over here, right? And I don't know if I talk about this later. What's going on? Where are we at? Okay. What's this saying? Oh, okay. Well, this is, I'm starting to develop this concept that I know is coming up and it's weird for me to not just mention it now, but it'll come up is this idea of anchoring. All these bad boys here are fixed and these guys can move, right? Just think about it. So if I rotate this, right, this whole thing is going to warp around, right? But what about these guys? Like the way we have it now is that, you know, is that there's only this one axis and you and you and you warp this bad boy you know and that warps all this other shit but all these points along this like in this perpendicular plane like kind of stay put right but once if you want to be able to control this rotation here i was thinking you could actually make imagine you could rotate this point like around right you you would make like a Okay, okay, imagine all th all of these guys have their rotations controlled, right? So you rotate it around like that. What would happen? It would become like a half pipe, right? Which would be a fucking cool thing to be able to do, right? So you have this, you can, you can just have an option where you select all of the edges and you rotate those bad boys and now we've got this badass half pipe. And we can move, still move these points so we can have a half pipe that bends around, a half pipe that does like, I mean, it's it's kind of mind blowing, but the thing is, if you wanted a half pipe that bent round, then these points would still have to move re relative to these guys, you know. Like you can't have them sit there fixed. 
You can't, you know, you can't move these guys and have these all fixed. It would look bizarre, like they'd all be stuck there, right? But these guys are all determining the position that they're in. If you move this guy up, you force it to move up, right? Um, but if you move this guy up, then these two points move. They move with him. That's at least how we have it at the moment. So I'm starting to realize that there's like different concepts that are coming up. Like, and one of them is this important one of this as anchoring, which I only come up with much later. So I'm sorry to take so long to get there, but it's kind of, I think it's like the last thing that I have to say. Um, what am I doing here? Oh, okay. So another thing, and I feel like I'm getting a little bit carried away now, but but it's a good idea. So fuck it. It's like, okay, so before I was thinking you could, you, you had this whole, you had an option to like, to like rotate all of the outside, to control all of the outside rotations, right? On the outside, right? That's what, we, that's what I showed before. Um, fuck, I hate this program. Um, I can't go back, oh, man. Okay, so now I'm thinking... Typically, if you wanted to rotate, let's say we wanted to t twist this bad boy, right? What would we do? We would turn this track point that's sitting on one of these interfaces, right? There's a track point in this interface, and we turn it, and then there would be this twist between these two, right? But what happens if we wanted the twist to go along the whole track? We would have to sit there and twist this a, a little bit, and then twist this a little bit, and then twist this a little bit, a little bit more. You know what I mean? Like, what happens if we wanted to twist, like, a whole section of track points? Like, how would we do that? You know, it's like I was saying with the with the half pipe. If you want to make a half pipe, you've got to stick together all of these um, meshes, right? And then you've got to be able to say, okay, I want all of the outside interfaces to twist around so that I get myself a half pipe, right? And with the track point thing, it gives you, like, control over the, um, you know, the interfaces. But once if you want some some more control and sure you could say yeah let's just have a global option where we control the rotation of everything what happens if you don't what happens if you just want to control between a point and a point and that's when i started coming up with this idea of you know ranges is where when you do a rotation you know it actually has a range you can control the range so you can say okay for, i want to rotate at this every this line to rotate at this control the rotation of this line at this point However, I want it to be locked down to this point and this point. Not all the different, not these two interfaces on either side, but rather these two guys, right? Um, to be honest, I haven't hashed this out. This is something that I'm still trying to understand what it means. Like, what, what's the simple way of looking at what I'm talking about? But it's definitely something that, that's a consideration. We want to be able to control things globally. You know, not just, we don't just want to have to kind of you know, you want to be able to say, okay, for this patch, I want to, I want to do shit. You know, and it, and it kind of has something to do with what rotation is. And I'm very proud of these drawings, if I do say so myself. Because they're so simple. Okay, so. So I'm thinking, okay, so what does it mean? What does a rotation mean? It's like, well, if you're going to rotate anything, at least in 1D... It's always going to be a guy connected on this side, and then possibly a guy connected on the other side. Fuck, now I just realized it could be another guy. Oh, man, my brain. At some point, you just got to stop, right? Mm. Okay, so this is what happens. You rotate this bad boy, and this guy, you can imagine when you turn this thing, what this line would look like. You know, I think it would be very cool to actually have, like, little tutorials that go through all of the mechanics that, that's actually at heart. You know, like these elemental structures that eventually you just t keep tying them together. I mean, I think it would be very cool, uh, but uh, maybe maybe for another project, another day or something. Again, I'm thinking, fuck, you know, the, the, the true element is not a point on either side. It's just connected to one point, right? So you have this point here and it's creating a line to this other point and you turn this and then that, that controls where this exit point is, right? You can turn it even more, it will come from here. Right? Now I'm thinking again, what does turning mean? 
It's like, well, I mean, before we were, the drawing was just in one plane. It was just on this plane, this like XY plane or whatever. But there's also Z. So we were going to rotate in the XY plane, but you can also rotate along this plane, which is the ZY plane, right? Like that. You can imagine it going like. Sorry about the sound effects. And then you could also rotate. Oh, in this plane here, this this guy coming up along here. So this is the Z x plane right so it's like right and that's all yeah what you can do it's pretty badass mm -hmm. now i can record as long as i want i was kind of attached to the whole 15 minute thing now i don't know whether or not i should run back to what i know run back carl okay now i'm just having this kind of epiphany about rotation mm. And when you say that you're rotating through this ZY plane, right, this rotation, what you're actually doing is you're taking this axis and you're turning it. You know, you're literally, I'm trying to, in my, in real life over here, I'm like turning this pole forwards, like I'm doing like forearm workouts, like I'm twisting my wrists down and rolling them up and down, right, forwards in front of me. Right, and then the same here, rotating here, and then the same here. I mean, I, you know, I just, I, I really hope this doesn't come off as condescending. Me saying shit like this, you know, like, you gotta understand. Every time I write something down, it's because I personally find it to be profound. You know, like I don't do it because I'm thinking, oh, I must try to explain this because other people are stupid. That's that's never, you know, uh, my intention. Never. It's always my own journey. I'm always just recording my journey towards, you know, understanding. Okay, so I'm thinking this is a very cool way of looking at it. X, Y, Z going through this point, controlling the, you know, rotation by just twisting these, turning these axes. Okay, Carl. At some point, I'm going to shut the fuck up. Okay. Okay. Well, this was an interesting photo. I did take a better one. 1D. Just a whole list of these things slotted together. And then at the interface points, we have, you know, we can control the, you know, position, rotation, and scale. 2D. It all goes along this big plane, it, you know, across this way and like this. And we get this sheet of blocks. 3D, I didn't draw it because, Jesus, you know how long it takes to draw these fucking things. Okay. Uh, there's one. There's a smiley face. Do you see it? Okay. It's not supposed to be a smiley face. Okay. Cool. Okay, anchoring. This is badass. I mean, Ed, you've, uh, you basically, you've basically... You've done this already, right? And you called it um, differential editing, right? So you had this thing where if you try to move one guy, all the guys in front of him would move, right? So this is a generalization of that. I only realized that later, right? But this is, I think, generalizes that functionality. So I think what I've got here is the, is the, is the core, if I can be so fucking arrogant, the core maths, the core kind of set theory um for what we're doing you know anyway okay anchor this fucking bad boy right so you twist this guy and this guy's anchored right so that you keep twisting this line just bends right like this if you didn't anchor it it would just snap up and this line would be straight so it would it would you know you can imagine it would just the line would go up like this and then connect to the point here right but no we haven't we've anchored it we're saying the movement we don't want the movement to change right okay Again, I'm not being condescending to you. I'm being condescending to myself. <clears throat> okay. I'm trying to explain this to myself. Okay. Now, what happens if we anchor the rotation as well? So that means that this, this, the angle that it comes out of this thing must stay fixed. The previous one didn't. The previous one, you kept rotating and it, it tends to this point here. Like it, 
You know, it goes real pink and then real pink, you know. But this guy, we're going to anchor it. So you can see there's like a weird ass bin going on here because we're saying, okay, it must be this angle here and it must be this angle here, you know. So yeah, you can actually look at it and see how it's physically reacting, you know. And I'm starting to feel like, like I'm really getting somewhere now because I'm starting to be able to see the physicality of it. Uh, and this is my last slide. I mean, I felt like I was going to jizz myself if I kept going. <laughs> okay, so, okay, so, so this is me being like, okay, well, physical, what, is it, what does it mean when you anchor something, you know? What does it mean when you anchor the fucking rotation? It's like, well, this guy is not anchored, right? There's a spring here. This is one thing that I... Okay, so this is my last slide, so now I'm going to explain what the fuck am I doing. Okay, so... Okay, so all of these points are connected by springs, right? These very complicated springs, these sophisticated, these springs that know about um, derivatives, um, that know about rates, um, rates of change. Um, okay, so why? Why do we need a fucking spring? Right? The road is static. The, you know, at the end of the day, we're just developing this, this modeler. Right? That's what we've developed. We've developed a modeler. Like, just like any other 3D editor. Mm -hmm. But we do it from scratch. Right? Because, because we, that's how we roll. Like, you know... So, why springs? You know, who gives a fuck? It's like, well, it's because the editor itself, like, think about it. You grab a point and you start pulling it and what decides where that point goes? It's like, well, it just moves to wherever you fucking tell it to. And I'm thinking, fuck that, you know, like the whole system itself should be, should be based on springs. Like if you pull a point, like it shouldn't, it should deform naturally. It should deform like a real object. It shouldn't just just go exactly where you tell it to. I'm thinking that if you actually integrate real physics into the modeler itself, it would create this amazing editor. You know, this I really think that, you know, at the moment the frame rate is nowhere near high enough, and that's one thing that I'm very concerned about. This whole fucking speech is if if the frame rate is what it is now in Unity, this is not going to really be that cool. You know, because right now you can't even tell, you know, it takes so fucking long to draw everything. I, I hope to God that we figure out ways to make it a, a, a thousand times faster than it is now, because otherwise it's not going to be cool. But if we can, if we can make it so you can click on a point and move it, and it has like this amazing spring dynamics, I mean, it's going to be awesome to fucking edit it, you know, changing the dynamics. What kind of clay do we want this? To the shaping to be made out of you know and then you just click and you know and fuck with it you know and it's gonna be magical you know creating creating um, tracks and and this you could use this to create some crazy fucking shit not just a track you know I'm starting to feel like this is um, this is some kind of amazing shit like I'm thinking about the 3d option like what could you do in 3d space were you controlling the rotation of something Ooh, <laughs> I have no idea. I think it's actually, yeah, we're actually are controlling a mount. Fuck. Oh man, this is totally getting me me hard. Okay, so, okay, so this this is not anchored, right? So if you try and rotate this bad boy, he'll go to wherever you're going, but he's going to give you some resistance, right? This resistance does not stop it getting to any certain point. You can get this to any point, but it's not just going to fly there. Right? It's physical. You know, we want it to be like a real thing. So it's going to react like with a spring. Right? But it'll go anywhere you want it to. This guy has been locked down. Now, what does that mean? It's like, okay, here's the rotating element here. Here's the line coming out of it. But it's locked to... It also resists turning, you know, which is just for natural sake. But it's locked. This piece here is fixed. Right? So... So, so you can see this line here has to come out of this point, right? So you could turn this and the turning itself, you know, is, is spring affected and this connection to this point here is spring affected. Uh, you know, 
But you can imagine, this is a groove with a ring around, well this has got a ring around it and the inside of a groove and the groove is spring connected, right, to the actual surface. Yeah, but you gotta, it's gotta be able to lock down, you know what I mean, this is locked down, this, this arc here. Yeah, so you actually, there's a pipe coming out of here and you're actually turning this arc. Yeah, fuck, I, I still, anyway. Anyway, you can see what I'm doing. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to be, um, yeah. Anyway, I, I hope this makes sense. Like it's, yeah, yeah. Physical. It's fucking physical. This shit. Anchored. Okay, so anchored would do everything, right? Because now we can anchor everything. We can anchor the position if we want, or we can not. Right? Or you can anchor the rotation, you can not. And you can do that with every single track point. Or you could anchor the scale. And, and again, to be honest, I don't even know what anchoring the scale does. I just know that it works in English. <laughs> you know, but I don't actually know what it means. You know, does the scale change? Like, if what is the scale here? Well, the scale is like the, you know, the angle of attack coming in here. You know, if you increase the scale, this thing's going to go whoosh. You can force it to just go. Oh, you can't actually see where my mouse is going. It's going totally out the screen. Like, you know, I can control the attack. Yeah. Anyway, um, the scale. What happens if the scale is negative? That's weird. Anyway, um, yeah. So, what have we discussed today? What have we learned, kids? It's like, well, we're gonna make a physically based, a physics based you know, just, I don't know what this fucking thing is called, like a mesh Lego. Oh, that's good, right? We can't use the word Lego. But that's basically what it is. It's saying, okay, we got these Lego pieces, and we're gonna snap them together, and then you can control, you know, like, you can like anchor the, this piece, this interface here, anchor the position, and you can twist it round, and then you can anchor this one, then anchor this one, and then anchor the following one, and twist it, and then anchor the next one, and then twisting it, and then add like a rotor, and then start curling up the edge, and make it into a pipe, fucking hell, yeah man, yeah, okay, cool, rocking, um, sweet, let me know what you think, um, don't know what else to say, feel like, I feel like, I have the soapbox now and I can just talk. Hmm. Hmm. I just don't want to go back to my life. <laughs> okay, dude, I'm gonna I'll I'll let you know if I come up with anything else. I hope this makes sense. Um what am I doing? Yeah, we gotta implement all this shit, right? But but fuck it, this is, this is what I wanted, this is what I needed, like where the fuck are we going, what does this all mean? And like, you gotta admit, like this is completely different, like, how it is that we're gonna implement this is, is, you know, is, is, got nothing to do with what we've done so far, right? So, hope you, uh, hope you appreciate this somehow, like that I've just said, okay, well let's go back to the drawing board, but, um, Anyway, I'll try to, I, I feel like I need to kind of tie this all up with where we've been, you know, like I'm just, I'm just spitballing now, like, you know, but the thing that locked me up before is that I didn't, um, I don't know, I just felt like I was, I didn't know how to contribute next, you know, like, I don't know. I don't know, I've, I, I have this strange feeling, I, I don't know how you're going to react. Anyway, let's find out. Rocking dude.